Welcome back, everyone. We're about to start a big unit that is key to object-oriented programming. And you can see by the little title clip here, it's inheritance and polymorphism. Uh, this is going to be a unit which doesn't teach you a lot of new code, but it shows you how to organize and structure your code. So um, it'll set up relationships between classes. It'll teach you how you can organize your projects and classes so the code is reusable, easy to maintain, adjust, build onto, etc., etc. Easier just to get started on this. So this term inheritance, I'm actually going to go straight to the documents from Java Online and just read a little introduction here. And here's what it says. It says, the idea of inheritance is simple but powerful. When you want to create a new class and there's already a class that includes some of the code that you want, you can derive your new class from the existing class. In doing this, you can reuse the fields, methods of the existing class without having to write them yourself. Well, that sounds good. Here's a little picture. One picture of it could be like this. Let's say you're writing a program and it has to do with bicycle simulation for some reason. And so you've already written a class called bicycle. And you've got code in there like raise the seat, lower the seat, change the gears, speed up, slow down, and stuff like that. Then you realize as part of your program, you want to add a couple more types of bikes. You want to add a class specific for mountain bike because you feel mountain bikes do a little bit of extra stuff that bicycles can't do. So you want a mountain bike class. Well, instead of recoding the entire bicycle class in here with like a copy paste, what you can do is you can say mountain bike build off of bicycle. And the key word there is going to be extends. Mountain bike extends bicycle. And what you do is you end up inheriting a whole bunch of the stuff from the bicycle class automatically gets dumped into mountain bike. You don't type any code. It's just there. You've built off it. Then maybe you want a road bike class, right? Racing bike. You extend bicycle. You've got all the code from bicycle. Same thing with tandem bike. Extends bicycle. You got all the code from it. When you do this kind of setup with your classes, it's obviously efficient because you're not retyping code. And the other nice thing is if you change code in Bicycle, all those changes get applied to all the classes that extend off of it, which, by the way, are called subclasses. And classes that you extend off of are called your superclass. And so that's sort of that little picture there. Just going to give you a few quick examples off the sample project files, which you should open so you can walk through them a little slowly. But if you check this out here, I've got one that you've done before. You guys have used frames before in some of our previous projects. And when you coded the frame, you just added a frame to your project and you didn't give it much thought. But if you actually look at the source code here, it wrote something like this. My class that I called game frame extends JFrame. Now this extends is the keyword that lets you build off of another class or basically extend off of another class. When I do this, my class called GameFrame, which you see here is pretty empty. There's not a lot in there. It gets all the code from JFrame. And part of that code is a lot more than you think, but it's all this kind of stuff. I mean, it made a window. It has icons. You can resize. You can maximize. You can minimize. Where did it go now? I've lost it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. I can make it bigger. I can minimize it. I can shut it down. I mean, that's a lot of code there, right? I can drag the window around. I didn't have to code any of that. So right off the bat, when you look at this, this idea of extending can be great. I probably just inherited hundreds, thousands of lines of code there to make that frame work. And so that's sort of one of the benefits of inheritance. You'll see here I have this project called Student Teacher that we'll look at. And I'll just show you a quick picture here. But here's the student teacher project, a little bit of the inheritance that I've already coded in for you. You'll see here that I had to wanted to write something to simulate a school, uh, sort of like a mark tracker, students, teachers, etc., etc. So what I started with is I started with a class called person. There's certain things that every person has, like an address, a name, an age. Now, what gets more specific about a person? Well. I know a teacher is a person, but a teacher has a little bit more. So I made a class called Teacher, and I extended Person. 
and then teacher gets a few things specific to a teacher. I also know that a student's a person. So student extends person, gets all the code from person, and then they get some student specific code as well. And then I went even further. An exchange student is a lot like a student. And so an exchange student gets all the code from student. And I've added some specifics that make an exchange student unique. So that's where we're going to be going with this. And when you look at that project in our NetBeans here, you'll see there's my person class. And we won't look at it in detail right now, but just sort of the basics, right? A couple of properties, a couple of methods. And then when I go to student, student extends person. You'll see here the variables aren't listed there. You don't have to type them. You just get them. Okay, so these fields, and there'll be a few exceptions, those fields are a part of your student class. Now, there'll be little rules about like the term private and protected, which we'll explain in the next video or two. But for the most part, you get the stuff, and now you can see your student gets a few extra methods like study, okay, get average mark. And then you'll see exchange student. That builds off of student. Even more function comes in here. And we'll explain that stuff a little later too. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of the idea of the very beginning, the basics of inheritance. You get to build off of pre-existing classes. Check out the next video where we start to get into the rules and the very specifics to what you can do, what you can't do, and how you have to do stuff. Thanks for watching.